Um, we're going to start our Chapter 2 and our Chapter 3 notes today, and you might be a little shocked to find out that we're going to do both chapters today. Before we even get started, I want you to take a look at the assignment. So write this down, because we might not have a full time at the end to let you have plenty of time to write this down, so let's have you write this down now. <laughs> you can, I am giving you permission to just skim chapter two in your reading. So you don't have to really fully, very carefully read chapter two because it has not got some really deep thinking type stuff involved. And so that's why I'm going to try and do these two chapters in a row. You do need to thoroughly read this one. It has got very good examples in it. Read chapter three well. It's got good examples um, past what we're going to do today. Um, so I do want you to work these problems in Chapter 2. You are allowed to skim the reading on that. And I do want you to work these problems in Chapter 3. Make sure you do read that. Um, this means, you know, look at problems 1 through 4 and you pick one of those to do. It's something like get an article from a magazine or a newspaper or, you know, the Internet or something, and then you're going to look at how it's displayed and and give some information on that. Okay, questions on that assignment? Ben? All right, so let's talk about chapter two first. Yes. Next class, Friday. Okay, if you're not here, on, then it'll just be the class after that. Yes. Okay, so there are two main things that we want to make sure that we have a very easy understanding of in Chapter 2. Um, our first goal in Chapter 2 is to make sure that we know the difference between categorical and quantitative data. And we talked about that the very first day of school. You remember we said, I put some things up there, and we talked about categorical, where categorical would pretty much divide data into categories. And quantitative is what kind of data? Numerical, very good. Something that you would order. You know, you think about it, if you can average it, then it's probably quantitative. Okay. Um, how about, remember we went through the example of what if I was talking about uh, the color of your eyes? What type of variable data would that be? Um, categorical. Categorical. If I was talking about your um, shoe size, that would probably be, yeah, because we could get an average shoe size of the men and the women or whatever. Um, how about our social security numbers? That is categorical, right. As well as our zip codes, because I would say, you know, I would group them into 76008 and 76080 and, or whatever. Okay. Um, we are also going to make sure that we know from Chapter 2 how to Describe who, what, when, where, why, and how. And so then you all have been given the Chapter 2 notes, and let's go through that. Okay. So first, um, I put these answers up here, and then I realized they weren't very easy to see. So let me go back and do this a different way. Ah, here we go. Okay, so what are data? Data are data with data being a plural thing. Data would be um, values in context. Remember the first day I said, do you like the number 99? <laughs> and then, you know, we had a discussion, well, 99 what? Well, if my AP stat's great, I love 99. If it's my bowling score, you know, not necessarily so much as my golf score, you then yeah, because that's great compared to like 350, but okay. So now when we read something, we want to make sure that we can identify the W's of it. Who is going to be, um, you know, the individual or the unit or whatever individual that the data is collected about. OK. 
Okay. What is going to be what type of data is collected about those individuals? Okay. So the type of data collected about individuals. You know, if I'm collect um, taking your shoe size, your hair color, your eyes, your weight, your height, the type of data collected about the who. All right. When, what do you think that's going to be? Correct. When the data was collected, does that matter? Yes. Okay. If I ask the New Yorkers how they felt uh, safe-wise on September 10th, 2001, it's going to be a lot different than the data I collect on September 12th, 2001, when the data was collected. Okay. 2001 is when the infamous 9-11 occurred. Okay. Where? That's going to be what? Where the data was collected. Why? What do you think that one is? Yeah. The reason that the data was collected. <clears throat> How is going to be? Oh my gosh, you're so smart. How the data was collected. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Hey, they had this new feature on the smart board. If I like click it and I went, oh man, I didn't want that to go off. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, but I need that to go off. Y'all done? Okay. Next. All right. There are two major ways to treat data, and we've talked about that. What do you think is used to answer questions about how cases fall into categories? A categorical variable. Categorical variable is used to answer questions about how cases fall into categories. A categorical variable may be comprised of word labels, blue, red, green, you know, your hair color, <clears throat> or it could be numbers, our social security numbers, our zip code, okay? Um, and then social security number, hair color, okay. What about the next one? What's used to answer questions about the quantity? Quantitative variable. Very good. Okay. Is used to answer questions about the quantity. Examples? Shoe size? What else? Our various heights? Um, okay. All right. What is a statistic? Yes. Okay. Statistic is a summary num a summary of data. For example, mean, median, mode. We're going to get into standard deviation. All that. summary of data. Um, Notice that this is, we're talking a statistic as opposed to a parameter, which statistic is for R and parameter is for our entire, okay? So now let's take a look at this. Are the numbers 17, 21, 44, and 76 data? Possibly, okay? Doesn't have any labels. Exactly right. Remember when I said is 99 a good number for you? Okay? Well, that's the issue. Data must have context to be meaningful. If data, if we don't, if you just give me a string of numbers, then that means nothing to me because I need to know what this num these numbers are representing. <clears throat> the numbers listed above could be test scores, ages of groups of golfers, uniform numbers on the starting backfield of the football team. Without context, again, without context, data cannot be interpreted. Okay, so let's do this problem here. Suppose a Consumer Reports article that was published in June 2005 on energy bars gave the brand name, flavor, price, number of calories, grams of protein and fat. Identify the following. Who's, what's the who? Who is the data collected on? 
Yes, energy bars. Yes. Who is the thing? Okay. What? What's the what? That means what was collected about the who? Okay, good. Brand name. Flavor. Price. Number of calories. <clears throat> Grams of protein and fat. All right. Now, when was the data collected? Okay. It doesn't say when the data was collected, does it? So um, you could say, let's see, what is that? You say, we, um, it's not known, what? Okay, you could just say not stated. And then you could put in parentheses if you wanted to. You don't have to, but you could say, you know, you know it's going to be before because of, it would have to be before the article. You know, and so that could give you some time frame. You know, I'm sure lots of improvements have happened on energy bars and lots of changes and diet, dietetic philosophies and all that kind of stuff that are different than June 2005. <clears throat> okay, where was the data collected? Not stated. How was the data collected? Not stated. Why was the data collected? Yeah, not really. I mean, it was in an article, so you could say, you know, for for the consumer reports uh, readers or consumers or, or, well, I guess, you know. It's not really stated, so we can put that, but we could put, you know, for the readers of the Consumer Reports article, but that's all we know. Okay, what are our categorical variables? Brand name. Okay, flavor. Okay, brand name and flavor. Is that all? Okay, which what would be our quantitative variables and what are the units? Okay. And that would be in US dollars or whatever. What's next? Calories. And what's the unit on that? Yeah, I mean calories. But I mean it in itself is a unit. I mean so I don't think you really need to put that. What about protein and fat? Okay, protein in grams and fat in grams. Okay, very good. Done? Let's do the next one. Yeah, okay, let me give you like about two minutes to do that one at your table. Ready, set, go. Okay, so questions, do you guys have any different discussion on the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the Boston Marathon? Okay, then we're ready to go. Is it not? No, where was, where was the data collected though? The, that's the question, the where is, where is the data collected? But how do you, I mean, where do you get the gender, county, age, and stuff? <laughs> I mean, I put <laughs> registration form or something. I don't know. But I don't think you're in New York and you have the registration form. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Oh, look, there's all the answers. Okay, so we're done with the chapter two part. Let's go on to chapter three. That was all chapter two.
<laughs> okay. So let's go on to chapter three. Chapter three is a little bit more in depth, has a little bit more thinking involved, especially when we get to the, the end of it. But let me kind of explain to you the um, general pr process that we're going to have in this unit. I'm putting two and three together. Two is really simple. Three is medium in difficulty. Four is um, on, if chapter three is on displaying and describing categorical data, then what do you think chapter four is on? Yeah, displaying and describing quantitative data. And that gets pretty in depth. That's very numerically based. It's giving mean, median, mode, interquartile range, understanding how to make a box plot, um, lots of different, you know, and standard deviation. Even And so that's some deep concepts. So we're going to save that for a day in itself. We're also going to save Chapter 5 for a day in itself. Then I did allow for a review day so that if any of that ran over, we've got that little buffer day, and then we can do some review stuff, and then the test. The test for this unit will occur either on the last day of the six weeks or the second to last day of the six weeks, but it's in the last week. So what does that mean if our test is in the last week of the six weeks? No retest. So starting the unit, you know that in advance. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and I'll just leave this up here like this. Okay, we're going to start on how to display and describe categorical data. The first way is a frequency table. <clears throat> and so that's what it says right here in green. Frequency tables are often used to ca ca for categorical data. Frequency di tables display the category and the number of counts. When we did our bear hunt and you were going along and you were saying green, 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 yellow, yellow, brown, then you were, and somebody was tallying, they were creating a frequency table because those tallies are the frequency that it occurred. Now, what happened when we came inside from our bear hunt outside? We were tallying data, and, you know, Jenna might have gotten 23 tallies, but then Maggie was sharp on her bear sighting adventure, and she saw 37 bears. So how can I compare the number of Jenna's brown bears to the number of Maggie's brown bears if they saw different totals, totals of bears? How can I do that? How can I level the playing field? Percentages. Very good. And that is the main thing that you have to understand is that a relative frequency table is going to level the playing field by getting percentages. When we came in from our bear hunt, you all turned your totals into percentages so I could compare the number of your brown bears to your brown bears. Okay. Understand that percentages is leveling the playing field. Okay. Here is a frequency table of a bag of M&Ms. And I would have to say that since it has 55 M&Ms in it, it's one of those tear and share bags. Have you seen this? The tear and share bags of M&Ms. They're a little bit bigger because you're supposed to share them, but we really don't. You know how that goes. Okay. So here, this is in, We got 13 blue, seven, and so you got all of those. Interesting. Didn't we kind of find that we had more oranges when we did our M&Ms? Remember that? Um, okay. But they have changed them all into percent. So I just want to do a quick check here to make sure that you know how to turn your frequency, your actual tallies here, you need to make sure you can turn your tallies into percentages to be able to do the relative frequency. Questions there? If I was going to find the blue relative frequency, I would take the tally of 13, compare it to the total in the bag, and that's how I get my 0.236, but I'm going to turn that into percent by multiplying by 100 or moving my decimal. And then what they ended up doing was they rounded. Okay, questions there. Anybody find this yellow interesting? No, I mean, I would have kept it right here, personally. But they put it here. They did totals because they wanted to make it simple to tell that they're supposed to round up to 100. Why did this happen in the yellows? You see that? 14.5%, they just did 14. Why? Because technically we should round up, right? If you're just looking at that in isolation. Well, I mean, what happened here? 
we had three others that rounded up, and it wouldn't then have totaled to 100. So they decided that since these were more powerful rounders, that they just went ahead and put that one down to make it an even 100. Okay? All right. So frequency table and relative frequency. Let's see. Next, we're going to talk about bar charts. A bar chart, also known as a bar graph, is often used to display categorical data. The height of the bar is the count. So if I'm making a bar, you know, you've been doing this, oh my gosh, since first grade, that this is how many counts you have in there. So the height of the bar is how many counts. These bars, it's very important that you make a conscious connection, that the bars are displayed next to each other for easy comparison, but when you are constructing a bar chart, the bars do not touch. Why would these bars not touch if I had blue here and red here? Why would they not touch? Because there's no purple. Nice. I mean, yeah, you're getting, that's kind of the idea, that's a silly statement, but kind of the idea. Blue doesn't run right up to red, and I could change the order. I mean, I could just as easily, see, categorical variables right here, it says, cannot be ordered in a meaningful way. So you can put them and switch the order of the bars around. It doesn't matter which order you put the bars in. Um, now, I will tell you for comparison's sake that, if I, that ones that would touch, those are called, we'll learn about that in chapter four, those are called histograms. And so let me kind of demonstrate what that would be like. If you had one that was touching, it might be for this reason. Say I did a collection of data of um, hourly salaries of lawyers in the Metroplex. And then I tallied them up. Maybe these are the lawyers that their hourly rate was, one, was from $100 to $200 an hour. And then I tally those up. And then this is the one where their rate was from $200 to $300 an hour. Do you see how these values run up against each other? 100 to 200 and 200 to 300. So that's why they touch, because they are in an order for a reason, and they run up next to each other. So that's a histogram, which we will learn about in Chapter 4, but there's a comparison. Okay. All right, next, we're going to look at some pictures of our M&M charts. I do not like the way that these notes were designed in that I think this right here is misleading because this says relative frequency bar chart displays the proportion of counts for each category. Well, is this doing that? <laughs> this is just the tallies. So this is just a regular old frequency table, whereas this down here with the percentages, that is the relative frequency table. I don't like the way those, the notes were designed in that sense. Make sure you know that the sum of the frequencies is 100% right here. Okay. Good? All right. Is that all on that page? Oh, no. Pie chart. A pie chart is another way to display categorical data. A pie chart shows parts of a whole. Why would a pie chart be difficult to construct by hand? Okay, nobody can draw a perfect circle. Okay, that's pretty good looking though. That is pretty good, isn't it? Well, it's more ovalish. What? Yes, ma'am. If, say, I wanted to do this 24% for blue, I would need to know how many degrees of a circle, you know, from tax stuff, that is. Well, I would expect it to be almost a quarter of it, but not quite. I mean, you know, but then how am I going to do 13% and stuff? Okay, difficult. Difficult to construct by hand, not done very often. Okay. Um, now, we're going to get into the next section. We'll go ahead and fill in these blanks, and then we're going to move into our groups. A contingency table is the next type of table that we're going to learn about. A contingency table shows two categories, uh, two categorical variables together. For example, and we're going to see this in the next one, is um, 
men and women and their political views. Okay? The margins give frequency distribution for each variable, and that's called the marginal distribution. So we're going to um, get together and collect some data, and then we'll discuss that. So what I would like for you to do now is I'm going to order you, or I'm going to put you in your groups. And here's the two things I want you to do. I want you to go to your groups, and I want you to talk to your group about these different types of um, what you define as these different types of political views. You're not going to fill in any of your data when you go into your groups. You're just going to have a little discussion. In your group, I want you to dis, uh, you know, discuss um, the, the various political views, what you define as what and everything. And then I want you to decide, I want you to decide um, where you would fit if you would be considered a liberal political view, moderate political view, or conservative political view. So that's what you're going to do in your group. You're going to take your card, and I want you to group yourself by um, shape, the little shape on the cards. So go do that now.